Hi everyone, my name is Oksana Sennikova. I'm Security Technical Architect at Cisco, and I'm delighted to talk to you today about implementing applications for security for DevSecOps. In this session, I hope to help you understand how Cisco helps DevSecOps secure the modern development process of continuous integration and continuous development. We will discuss the trends in application development and their main drivers. And then we will also look at challenges that this brings to security field. And we will do a little demo showing you how security can be embedded in CI-CD pipeline. And then finally, we will talk about Cisco solutions such as Tetration, SalesWatch Cloud, Duo, and App Dynamics that can be used to solve some challenges at the runtime with applications in multi-cloud environment. So with that, a few words about the trends that are changing the way applications are being developed today. Well, first of all, there are a lot of diverse tool sets that can be used, such as Chef, Jenkins, and Docker that are pushing development in this area. And then moving to the hybrid cloud, the multi-cloud orchestration necessity, the workload portability, and then moving from VMs to containers that has been introduced several years ago, and then serverless functions, all of that changes how the applications are being developed. And um, the, the architecture of the application themselves is changing as well. You're moving, moving from monolithic applications into microservices applications that are split up into microservices, the leveraging APIs, both internal and third party APIs. And this is where continuous development becomes instrumental to help um, fulfill the agile processes that the, the development team teams are following right now. So all of that drives the changes in security operations as well, because um, the security operations and the traditional infrastructure tools that we used to use all the time before are not sufficient anymore. Think about uh, how these new approaches are challenging security. For example, how would you secure an application that uh, leverages third party APIs, how to go about consuming those APIs, how to make sure uh, which APIs have to be allowed and which should not be used, how to control all of that. Um, there are a lot of new goals and new questions that are rising from the ways that more than applications are being developed. And um, this is not something that you control with your infrastructure firewall. And we will be discussing all of these challenges in the upcoming um, slides in a few minutes. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about DevOps and uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. I'm sure everyone has seen this picture many times before. And I just want to say that the main goal of um, the agile approach in CICD in general is to be able to release code into production as fast as possible to get new features into the application in front of the customer as fast as possible and to receive feedback from the customer quickly to go back into the full cycle of development, implementing that feedback, right? To, uh, to get um, what the customer is requiring as, as soon as possible, because this is what the business needs are dictating. And uh, there are a lot of different techniques that can be used and um, of course, um, security can be embedded into this into this structure as well, into this approach as well. But this is something that is not typical to security. Security operations used to work completely different way. Right? Think about an example of firewall rule change. Um, there should be multiple level of approvals done. Different people have to sign off. Um, that gets to security department, then from there it gets to operations department. Finally, this rule hits your firewall, and then it hits your application team, and you receive feedback that something got broken because of that rule in your application, and the whole cycle has to repeat. And all of that, in good case, would take probably several hours. In worst case, it can take, it, it can take days or even weeks. This is not something that would go hand in hand with agile approach, right? Well, when we're trying to release multiple codes a day. And this is why we are trying to insert security into the DevOps. This is 
the right way to insert security because the main benefits that it will provide are shown on the slides, right? There will be more collaboration between the teams, less silos, um, and, and the, the in summary, the end goal will be not slowing down the developers with the security measures, but helping them to release uh, their code faster um, by uh, introducing tooling into their pipeline so that they can pass security tests and they can release code successfully. Um, so where security measures can be embedded into the development pipeline? Where most people usually start is compliance enforcement for um, uh, um, PCI compliance, for example, and the static code, um, source code analysis. And um, these are the main areas where the, the usually people start implementing security into the pipeline. And then we talk about updating threat modeling based on the changes that are made to the application in the de in this uh, development process and then introducing a dynamic attack detection capabilities and tools that uh, all together can produce feedback back to the development environment so that they can implement that feedback into their user stories for the next development cycle and so the main outcome would be if the pipeline fail uh, on any of the security tests, then it doesn't get to production. We get, the developers get notified and they have to implement the changes. If the pipeline pass, then the code is automatically deployed in your environment without any intervention. So that's the end goal of uh, trying to speed up development while maintaining security posture so that developers don't try to go around security, they go hand in hand with security measures. And so what are the main security challenges and constraints with this fast, with this approach, right? with um, security being embedded in development operations and DevOps? Well, first and foremost, that's speed. It takes a lot of time to, um, you know, it, how, Will you be able to do risk assessments and penetration test tests, things that usually take time when the application you're trying to assess changes 100 times a day, right? How do you do threat modeling if you don't have the design, right? If it's the agile approach that is being used. And then cloud introduce another complexity and then complexity is the enemy of security as we all know. And then um, the separation of, du of duties is something that is needed for security measures. It's not something that is common in DevOps um, environment, right? And all of that is uh, challenging the controls and how, you know, these automated processes are being controlled. And so um, there are a few things that can be done to address these challenges. First of all, the security has to be embedded as early as possible and shift left, so to, so to say, in the development process. And then uh, um, vetted uh, libraries and containers can be used uh, to establish some sort of standards, right? Um, security tools need to be introduced for static and dynamic uh, security analysis in the pipeline. And then um, some of these, new approaches can also be beneficial for security, such as frequent code change. It is also challenging for attackers um, to, to keep up with. And then immutable containers is something wh where there is no control plane really, is also something that makes um, reduces attack surface and making attacks more difficult to complete. And so when we talk about developing code, we need to incorporate security into linting so that the feedback comes back directly into developer's uh, IDE environment. And then we need to introduce static application security testing to check the libraries they, they use. Um, and, you know, there should be security advocates in the team that would complete peer code review from security perspective as well. And then when we, the, when the, code gets committed and it gets into the repository, this is where we can again do um, static analysis tests for the code that um, any high risk areas of the code where the changes has been made 
can be highlighted and um, and and reported back right to the development and then um, there should be testing for security functions specifically and also this is where you would sign your binaries so that if the binaries are getting changed somewhere later in the process that would be a potential indication of a of a breach um, so next when we are almost ready to release our code we need to make sure that the infrastructure where the code gets um, deployed is dictated by the application and we should leverage templates such as terraform templates or cloud formation templates to automate infrastructure deployment along with the code itself, right? Uh, things like dynamic application testing can be also included here um, and for active testing for any exploits, automatic fuzzing, penetration testing, and so on. And this can be um, not inbound, but it can be outbound testing as well. Um, and so the next, when we're all the test has been passed and we are ready to deploy our application. We would also implement additional defense at the runtime, which we will talk about in a little bit. And things like uh, red team and blue team testing is applicable here as well. So at the end, after all, this is how the simple typical DevSecOps pipeline would look like with a lot of tooling and a lot of processes being implemented along the way. Um, but we're not going to look at such a complex example. In the demo that I'm going to show you in a minute, we will look at um, an example of building and testing simple Hello World API service and implementing it through the Jenkins continuous integration pipeline. And then, um, by the way, this is also going to be released as a learning lab at DevNet, which you can take, which is going to have documented the guide to walk you through the whole process from committing code to the GitHub that will trigger the pipeline um, in integration. And then we would test the application, produce the reports, include static application testing with Snyk, which is an open source service for that. And then we would build our application into container, upload to the registry, and then deploy it to the Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to show you that um, demo, and I just wanted to um, tell you a few words about Jenkins first. So Jenkins is a free and open source tool that can be used to automate uh, software development processes with continuous integration and facilitating technical aspects of continuous delivery. It integrates with vast majority of different environments through the whole life cycle process of, uh, of all kinds, including building, documenting, testing, packaging, staging, deploying, static analysis, and much, much more. So with that, let me, um, so we will use this Jenkins file to describe our CI CD pipeline within Jenkins. And as you can see, I'm describing my environment here. Um, there is a build stage where we build application. We are using unit tests to test it, them up and then produce reports here. And then we're doing static application security testing with Snake. We are building image using Docker plugin in Jenkins. And then we upload it to the registry and we remove unnecessary files, and then we deploy that application on Kubernetes cluster using Kubernetes plugin. And this is the deployment YAML file that we use uh, to, to build our cluster. So with that, let me um, run the pipeline for you here. I'm using Jenkins with Blue Ocean plugin, which makes it, uh, uh, which has a very nice user interface and, make, and makes it like more user friendly to go through the pipeline and to perform any um, uh, operations here step by step. So you see that the test of the application has been done and we can review the report that has been created. Uh, the tests can be found here as well. They will be available after the pipeline completes. Um, so you, you can see all the, all the console outputs and all of the things that has been done. We have built our um, application 
Now we are going through static application security test, which has completed successfully as well using Snyk service, as I mentioned before, and you can click between the steps and see how they execute. So we have built our image um, here, and now we are deploying it to my Docker Hub registry. And once it is deployed, uh, we are moving to deploying application on the Kubernetes cluster. It does take a little bit of time for Jenkins to build that um, cluster, so um, bear with me while we are waiting for that to complete. All right, we see that we have checked uh, from the version control system and that the cluster has been created. We see that the namespace has been created, the service, and then the deployment itself. And now we are going to take a look at that uh, here. So if I try to describe the pod, here's the pod that we see uh, has been created for us. And then what we can also do, we can look at the service um, that has been created in this namespace, my CI CD app. And then we see that the service is running and here is the port where the application should be running. And we can use curl, uh, uh, curl command to and we are going to use curl command to hit that application and uh, see how that executes. You see that the application is running successfully and we are able to use our little API here. So that concludes my demonstration. Now that the application is running, we need to secure that at the runtime as well, right? So we need to provide additional measures as the application is running in our um, uh, production environment. And this is where Cisco has to offer several, um, several solutions. We start with uh, titration for application segmentation and risk management. We also have stealth watch for threat visibility and detection of uh, um, for private networks and public cloud as well. We offer Duo to enable security, uh, um, secure workforce access and access for developers to the control plane as well. And then we use App Dynamics for application performance monitoring and redu to reduce risks. So this is how these um, solutions are matching to the different deployment scenarios that you may have, that the, the VM deployments and containers are covered and also serverless functions are covered by some of them. And here you also see the control point uh, coverage from security perspective with these solutions. And the last thing I want to stay a little bit on is uh, this is also the learning map that is going to be available on DevNet Learning Maps Portal, Learning Labs Portal really soon. Um, this is the scenario that you will be able to go through to see how these products all work together to secure the application at the runtime. On top, we have the microservices application that is deployed on the Kubernetes cluster in the public cloud. And then we also have um, we also have app dynamics agents that are um, for application tracing. And then we use Duo for multi-factor single sign-on authentication and to secure DevOps teams access. And then we use Salesforce Cloud to monitor any threat and provide threat analytics for things like identity issues, IAM issues, root level password changes, S3 bucket issues, and so on. And this is also can work in public and, and private cloud environment. And then titration likewise is uh, helping us to build the policies for all of the microservices that we have in this application in the public and private cloud. So I strongly encourage you to look for this content and com to complete the lab to see the advantages of using these solutions. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for viewing.